We begin today the Gemara on Daf Kuf Lamet Ches Samet Beis at the bottom of the Yomit, the Mishnah. This is a Mishnah that's a continuation from the previous Mishnah, where it speaks about a father that is giving his properties as a gift to his son. And he gives it in such a ifin that he writes clearly that it's Mahayim Lach Amiso, maybe you don't have to write that clearly, but the point is he's giving it that the body of the property is already given to his son from now. But he wants to keep for himself the fruits, the usage of the property, until he passes away. So the Mishnah before spoke about uh, if you could sell it, if you can't sell it. Over here the Mishnah goes on to speak about this exact case, other halachas that apply. So the father in such a case, when he sold his property, toilish umachel, he can uh, he pulls off the fruits from the tree, and he can give to eat, to whomever he wishes. Because the fruits, the usage of the property is still his. And then when he passes away, whatever fruits are left in the property that are already detached from the field or from the ground, that will belong to the inheritors of the property, not to the son that he gave the property as a gift to. He gave him and he has the body of the property. And then when he dies, so the son gets the body of the property with all these fruits that are attached to it. But the fruits that are already detached, those are the paydas that belong to the father. And therefore, it goes to the Yerushim, not to the son that got this gift. Zaktik and so what do I see from this Mishnah? Talush in. Those detached fruits will go to the Yerushim, and not to the son that he gave it to. Mechuber loy. But when, if when the father dies, there are fruits that are still attached to the, to the trees of this property, so that will belong to this child that he gave it as a gift to. So the asks in this, but for Tanya, in another b'raise, we learned that it says the exact opposite. Now this b'raise here is also talking about this kind of case, where, where a father gave the property to his son, and he keeps the fruits for himself, and the body of the property already belongs to the son. And then this b'raise is talking about a case that, um, that the father... Sorry, the son, that is. The son, when the father was still alive, the son went and sold the property to somebody. Okay, so now what happens when the father dies? And you see that there are attached fruits in the field. So the, the, the buyer is getting this property. The son sold the property to this buyer. But, the Bryce says, Shomin is hamuchubarin lelekeya. We're going to have to evaluate the value of the fruits that are here in this property, that are still attached to it, that the lekeyach is going to have to reimburse the Yershim if he wants to take those attached fruits. In other words, even the attached fruits to the, to the trees, to the field, still belongs to the father, just like the detached fruits are his, so too the attached fruits are his as well. And therefore, if this buyer, which is taking now the property because he bought it from the son, want, if they want to take the fruits that are attached to the ground as well, they're going to have to reimburse the other Yarshim for this. Or they can just give the fruits themselves that are attached to the ground to the Yarshim. So this is the exact opposite of what we just said. In the Mishnah it says that the fruits that are talosh, that are detached, those fruits go to the Yarshim. Over here it says when there's a buyer of this son that's coming in the place of the son and getting exactly what the son would get. Here it says that the way it works is, not that they, even the attached fruits, he has to reimburse. The buyer that wants to take them has to reimburse the other Yarshim. Omarullah, so the answer is loikashya. It's not a contradiction. Khan bibnoi. The Mishnah is speaking about when it's the son himself, after the father dies, that's taking this property that the father gave him as a gift. So regarding a person's own son, we say that he takes the property and he takes all fruits that are attached to the property as well. Khan ba'acher. Here, it's, it's, when the, it's not the son himself that is taking this because the son already sold it to someone else. When it's someone else that's coming to take that property that the father gave a gift to the son, then that someone else is only going to get the actual property itself not any fruits. Not only not the detached fruits, not even the attached fruits, he's not going to get either. That's also still part of what the father kept for himself when he kept fruits for himself. Now, the Gemara explains the uh, logic for this difference. The reason is because a person has more of a connection, more of a closeness to his son. And therefore, when a father is giving the property away and he's giving the body of the property away and he's keeping fruits for himself, so if it's actually going to his own son, so then we estimate and understand that the person's intention is that his own son should get the body of the property and the fruits that are still attached to the property. Because he loves his son, so he wants him to get those fruits as well. But if it's not going to his son, if it's going to someone else, then we assume that the father's intention here is that that someone else should not get those fruits. 
even those fruits that are attached to the ground, the fruits should stay by him, or if when he, after he dies, it should go to his, the ones that inherit him, not to this other person that now bought this property from his son. So the Shabbat adds that the same would be, obviously, not only in a case where a son sold it to someone else, but also in a case where the father himself gave this property as a gift to someone else in the same kind of arrangement that he's keeping the fruits for himself and he's giving the body of the property to that someone else. If it's not his son, over there we're going to say that even the fruits that are still attached to the ground after the father passes away will go to the, to his, to the father's inheritors, not to this person that he gave the gift to. This idea that the, that the son gets the, the uh, fruits that are attached to the ground, it's Dafke, his son, that he has a special closeness to. Yeah, yeah. That means that there's more than one Yerush. Correct. And he gave this. So this, so what's so this explanation of the Treva? Mm-hmm. So it's not. Why should it go to the son that he gave the other one? It could go to go to any other sons. Chanami, there's other sons here, but this gift though, the gift of this field that he gave is to one son. So whoever he gave the gift to, the, the field, this son, but not the but not the the, uh, the Paris. And the field and the Paris, because the one that he gave the gift to is also a son, even if there's other sons as well. Maybe there are no other sons. Maybe the Yarshim the Mishnah is speaking about his brothers or other, other oh, Yarshim. But, but even that, that, he, that, the that. one that he gave the gift to is his son, which he has a special connection to. And therefore here we understand that he's giving him the Karka and the Paris HaMachobarim the Karka after he passes away. Okay, now the next Mishnah will discuss the Chlal, the general Alocha, Benigei to Yerusha. A person after he dies. And the uh, sons that are here to inherit him, there are sons that are gedolim, and there are the sons that are ketanim, that are uh, under Bar Mitzvah. So now, The older sons cannot take a shear from this uh, Yerusha, and the Parnasa that the Mishnah here is talking about refers to them using the money for clothing, and things that are similar to clothing, they can't use that on the expense of the portion of the Tikatanim would inherit. And on the other hand, Vloya Ketanim Nizoinin ala And the, the, the little children cannot get fed food and, and take their share of this inheritance at the expense of the Gedalim. So the point that the Mishnah is saying over here is, you have the Gedalim and the Ketanim, the, these are all children, and they all have to inherit their share of the inheritance equally. Uh, the, the nature, though, is that Gedolim, the, the price, the, the expense for their clothing is more than the expense of the clothing of the children. And on the other hand, the price of the food for the children that eat more and eat constantly, and then, then the, a lot of the food that they eat gets wasted. So they, they're, the food that we spend for the Ketanim would be more than the Gedolim. So therefore, the mission is saying you can't allow the Gedolim to take more money for their clothing on the, on the expense of the, what the Ketanim would be getting here. And on the other hand, you can't allow the Ketanim to take more for their food at the expense of the portion of the Gedalim. Rather, you have to divide it equally between all of them. And then from that equal portion that everyone gets, they will use it for whatever, whatever they need. So you divide it equally between them. Similar Allah, Nasu Gedalim, if... For the Gedalim, when they got married, they get, they're getting married and uh, they're for, this, for the uh, expenses of the chasana, so they took out of the Yerusha for the expenses of the chasana a certain amount of money. So now, Yisua Ketanim. So you have to also leave for the younger children that they should also have the right to take the same amount of money out of the Yerusha for the expense of their chasana. You're not going to go and then divide the, the Yerusha equally even though the Gedalim already took their expense for their chasana. You have to allow the Ketanim to also take equally like the Gedalim took. Now the mission goes on. The Imam Ketanim, if the younger children come along and say, "Hare anu naisim kederech shen asasamatam," we want to get a share of the inheritance to get married, just like you got married. And the Rishbam explains, as we'll see in the Gemara, the Gemara will clarify what it's saying here. That what this means is, if the Gedolim did not take anything from the inheritance, the Gedolim got the money that they needed from their chasana when their father was still alive. And so they got uh, a nice, uh, uh, the father took care of their chasana. And now, now the father passes away. Now the Ketanim say, we want to take from the Yerusha, just like what your father gave you when he was alive for the chasana. In such a case, ain't shayim alahem. We don't listen to them. Elam ha'shenosalem aviyem nosan. What the father gave when he was alive, that wasn't part of the Yerusha yet. That's what the father gave. But now after the father passes away, we divide the Yerusha equally, and they don't get anything extra for their chasana, because the Gedolim didn't take from the Yerusha anything extra for their chasana. Now, a similar case, the, Gemara, the Mishnah says, 
a similar halacha that is as it applies to girls. A person dies and he has no sons. He, he leaves, he has daughters, older daughters, younger daughters. So again, we say the same point here. The older girls cannot be misparnas, get dressed and buy clothing for themselves on the expense of the Yerusha that they're t- going to take away from the younger girls. And And on the other hand, we don't allow the, the Gitanais to be, get fed the food that they need uh, take, to take extra more than the equal share that they were taking away from the Gedailis. The inheritance is divided equally between the Gedailis and the Katanais, and everyone takes and uses it for their needs. Uh, similar, as we said before, Nasa Gedailis, if the Gedailis took from the inheritance for their chasana, so Yisuk Katanais, then the younger ones, you have to put aside for them also the money that they need for their chasana as well, that you take out from the inheritance. If the younger girls say, We want to get money for our chasana, similar to the way you got money for your chasana. And again, the point there is, when the father was still alive, then then we're not going to listen to what the younger ones are saying, because the older ones never got anything from the inheritance. They got it from the father when he was still alive. The Mishnah concludes, here, there's something that's stronger about the Yerusha of girls than the Yerusha when, when the, the sons, boys, inherit. Shahabanois, the halacha regarding daughters is, Nizainois ala banim. They're going to get fed from the Yerusha of the banim. The halacha is, as we'll see in the Mishnah Namad Beis, the first Mishnah of the next Patek, that when you have sons that Yarshin, and it's a case where there's enough money now to, to uh, feed the girls, so the, the banim take their Yerusha, but out of that Yerusha, the Bonais take a, uh, money to get fed, to, to be able to live. Uh, this is actually a condition in the Ksuba. One of the conditions in the Ksuba is that from the inheritance, from the money of this person, the daughters are going to get fed. So they're taking it out of the inheritance of the Bonim. But the Ein is Zainais ala Bonais. However, when there is girls, and when it's all girls, and you're going to have older girls or younger girls, we're not going to say that the younger girls are going to take out of the inheritance of the older girls that they should be fed from, from that Yerusha. If it's all girls, then they all get the Yerusha equally, and we're not going to feed the younger ones out of the Yerusha of the older ones. Dr. Gemara, Omar Rav said, Hi, God, Lachi, if you have the oldest of the brothers, the Lavash V'chasim Yibesa. So he dressed himself very nice, and he's taking this, where is he getting the money to, to dress himself so nicely? From the inheritance, from the house, of what, what there is. So really this he's taking from the, uh, what, what belongs to all of the children that are supposed to inherit here. So my dova dovet, what he has done is done. He's allowed, to, he's allowed to take clothing. In other words, it's not, he's not taking the fair share and then using that. He, no, he took out of the inheritance for himself to dress himself this way. So the Gemara asks, but how could you say this? Well, anan tanan, but this is exactly the point that the Mishnah said, You don't allow G'daylim to take for their expenses or their clothing out of the Yerusha on the expense of what the Katanim would be getting. And says the Gemara, Masnisin Bishracha. The Mishnah is speaking about a person that's bought, that, that, that doesn't work. He's, he's, he's unemployed. He's not, he's not doing anything. All right, so what the point of here is that when this godel gets dressed on the expense and he's taking it from the Yerusha, so that's actually a benefit to everybody because he's the person that's taking care of the whole inheritance. He's taking care of all the properties. Let's say it's a corporation or a company, whatever it is. So he's dressing himself properly in order to be able to deal with the business and manage with people. So that's for everybody's benefit that he's able to dress himself this way. So therefore, he's allowed to take from the general Yerusha for this purpose. But by a person that's a shracha, he's, he's not doing anything, and he's taking money for his clothing from the Yerusha, why should he be allowed to do this? That's what our Mishnah is talking about. Hmm. So on this, the Gemara says, shracha, it's a person that's not doing nothing, and we're allowed, with the Rav is coming and saying that, um, sorry, the Mishnah is, that is, the Mishnah is coming and saying that he's um, not allowed to take for his clothing from the inheritance, Pshita, that's obvious, why should he be allowed? He's, he's stealing, he's taking more than the fair share. I would think that still the brothers, the siblings are happy that he's taking, so he, he shouldn't, he shouldn't uh, be, be despicable. He should be at least dressed like a mensch, even if he's not doing anything and he's not representing them in any way. But still, maybe they would be happy that at least he's getting dressed like a mensch, so they, they're, moichel, they're, allow, they're allowing him to take. Therefore, the Mishnah says the that it's not this way, that he's not, he, we have to split the inheritance and then he can get dressed from, and take from the, what, his share that he got, can't take out of the share of the inheritance uh, from everybody. 
Then the Mishnah said that if you took out of the money of the inheritance for the chasana of the older sons, so then for the youngest sons, you also take money out of the inheritance for the chasana. Then the Mishnah went on to say that no, the younger ones cannot have a, a, a taina, cannot argue uh, to the older ones, give us for the chasana just like you got. Okay, so the Gemara here clarifies what the Mishnah means, as I explained it already in the Mishnah. It says the Gemara, my Omar. What is the Mishnah saying? Omar of Yude, so Rav Yude explains. Hachi Omar, this is what the Mishnah is saying. Nasa Gedoylem, La'acha Misisavien. If the older sons, they got married after the father passed away, so they took money out of the inheritance for the chasana from the Yerusha, so then Yisikatanam La'acha Misisavien. So the younger sons that are getting married later also. After the father passed away, they take uh, money out of the inheritance for the chasana, just like the older ones did. But if the older sons already got married when the father was alive, and now, and now the younger sons, after the father passes away, come and say, We want to also get married. And take money from the inheritance, the same amount that the father gave you when he was alive. And that, that should be out of the cheshbin of the, of the splitting of the inheritance. Give us that amount like you got from your father. For that, that we don't listen to them. What the father gave when he was alive. So then he gave. He was able to give whatever he wants. He gave towards the chasana. But now the younger ones are only going to get according to the fair share of the Yerusha. And the Mishnah speaks about uh, similar regarding the daughters, Gedailis and Ketanais. So here the Mishnah also said the same thing, that if the Gedailis took for their chasana, their, their share, so now the Ketanais can say that we also want to get our share for our chasana. Okay, now, so the Gemara here is going to bring a shaila that uh, was asked and uh, relate this back to our Mishnah. Shalach avua bagnive. Le Rave. Avu Baganive, so he sent to Rave to ask him the following Shaila. Ilamdeinu Rabbeinu, our teacher should teach us the following Alocha. Lafsa Ochla, a woman that borrowed money, and she used up this money, so now she owes money to someone. Now Va'amdav Nisis, she went and got married. Now when she gets married, Baal, the, so the husband, so whatever properties this woman owns, what happens when she gets married? It goes into the possession of her husband. Mm. But now the question is, what's the status of the husband that received these properties from his wife? So Baal Lekeach Hava, the husband that when he gets these properties, is he considered to be like a buyer that he bought these properties from his wife? That's his status. Or the husband, when he gets it from his wife, he has the, he has the din of a person that inherits something from someone. So here as well, the husband, he's obviously he's not literally inheriting his wife, his wife is alive, but he ha- does he have the halacha like a Yiddish when, he, uh, when he's uh, getting the properties from his wife? Now, and the relevance for this is here regarding this loan that his wife owes money to someone. Could that lender come and not collect these properties from the husband? I think one explains. Do I say like have that the husband is like a buyer and therefore omilva al Since this is a loan that the woman borrowed money from someone and it was not written in a document, it was just a loan that's, that was just by mouth and there was no, there's no document for this. And therefore, the rule by any loan that there's no document for is that ain't a goyvim and alakuchais. You can't collect such a loan from a buyer. Because a buyer, if you would allow any loan without any document to be collected from a buyer, then the, the buyer can never protect himself. He has no way how to find out that this loan exists, Bakhlal. Mm-hmm. Right, so it's only a, a, a loan that there's a document about it, and there's a coil, and people know about it, so that's something that a lekeach can be careful about. But otherwise, and Bill Valpe, you can't collect from a buyer. So in this case, this person that lent money to this woman, and now she gets married, and the husband is a buyer, he can't come and collect from the, from the husband. Or maybe we should say that the husband has the halacha of someone that is inheriting from the wife. And if so, a lender could collect from inheritors, whether this was, this was in a document, whether it's not in a document, any lender can come and collect from, uh, from inheritors. If, if you don't allow a lender to collect from inheritors, nobody's ever going to lend money. Because what happens if this person dies? He's not going to be able to collect the money. So over here, this lender would be able to collect from this husband. That was the Shaila that he asked, Rava. On Malay, so the Rav, if you says, so Rava answered, Tanina. We learned this here in our Mishnah. We could learn it out from what the Mishnah here said regarding these daughters. The Mishnah said that you had the older daughters that took from the father for their chasana. Now the younger daughters say, we also want to get 
our uh, money for our chasana. So this is how Rav understood the Mishnah. So what did we learn in the Mishnah? Tanine, nasu lois, if the older daughters took for their chasana, yisu kitanis. Now the younger daughters come and say, we also want to take money for our chasana, just like what the older daughters got. So the Gemara explains, my love, don't you think the case of our Mishnah is, nasu lois lebal, that the older daughters got married to a husband, and not only they took money for their chasana, these older daughters went and took from the inheritance and they, they brought it into their husband. It, they took it with them when they got married from the inheritance and now it's in the possession of their husband. So now Yisu Kitanes, now when the, the Kitanes are coming and saying, give us money for our chasana, why are they coming and saying, give us money? Give us money? They're saying, where's the inheritance now? You took it all in and you gave it to your husband. The husband possessed it because you, you took it. And when you got married, so now the younger ones are coming, Yisukatana is Mibal. Now the younger ones are coming to the husband and saying, Give us back these properties that you took from the inheritance for our chasana. So what do we see over here? The younger ones have the right to go and collect the money that they want for their chasana from the husbands of the older ones that got married before them. Now this this is over here. This is a, a loan. This is money that's owed for the younger uh, ones that, want, that are getting married now. That's like a milval pe. There's no there's no loan over here with a document. This is money that's now owed for the younger daughters that comes up now that they want to get married and they want to take their share. And what does it say here? They can take their um, the amount of money that they want from for their chasna from who? From these husbands of the older daughters. So we see that those husbands. They have to have a halacha just as a Yerish, not as a Lekeach. If those husbands would have the halacha of a Lekeach, so then that's it. They got it. They acquired it. And now the younger daughters cannot come and ask for the money for their chasana from the, uh, from the husband of the older daughters. So it must be that the, the, he has a halacha of a, uh, a Yerish, and therefore the younger daughters can take it away from him. Now, there is a discussion here in the Rishayim about what the Gemara is saying here, because there's something that's not clear over here. How did the older daughters go and take uh, properties from the inheritance and, and, and take it into their marriage and not by, by their husband. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a right. It's like a gneve. It's, it's, it's not even theirs. Why, why did they, all these properties end up by them and then by their husband? And now we're discussing whether the younger ones could take from the husband. It's a gneve, isn't it? Okay, so it's, it's not so clear. Some Rishayim say that the Gemara could have simply answered that, that the older daughters, the Chathchila, had no right to take these properties and give it to, uh, give it to their husband. Okay, but, but the Gemara gives a simpler answer. The Gemara here says, that's not what the Pshat of the Mishnah is. Loi, that's not how you learn the Mishnah. Nasu, Gedai Lois, when the older ones got married, and they got money for their chasana, Labal, they got married to a husband. Yisu, Kitana, is Labal. So too, the younger daughters also can take money from the inheritance to get married to a husband. It's the Mishnah's Bechlana talking about a case where the older daughters went and took from the inheritance into their possession and it ended up by their husband and the younger ones have to now take it away from them. It's just saying that whatever shear the older ones got for the chasana from the inheritance, the younger one take uh, a similar uh, shear. That's all. So there's no raya from our Mishnah here. But the Gemara asks in this, because there is a Braise that does say it this way. Any is this true? But Vatani Rabchia, Rabchia Torna Braise, Nasu Gedayel is Labal. If the older ones get married to a husband, Yisu Ketano is Mi Bal. The younger ones can come and take away from the husband when the older ones, when they got married and they took properties into the possession of their husband. Now the older one, the younger ones that is, come and take back for their chasana from their husband. So the Gemara is, is still saying, we should prove from here that the, uh, the husband from the older daughters has a halacha of a yairish, and that's why the younger ones could come and confiscate that. If you would be a, like a buyer, then the younger ones don't have the right to take from this. So here the Gemara says, still there's no raya to the case that we're talking about. Again, the shayla that we were talking about is a loan. Whether a person that money is owed to, will he be able to collect from a husband? Why is our case different? Because Dilma Shani Parnasa the Isla Kala. In this case, even if the husband is a buyer, still that possessions that he got from his wife, the younger daughters could come and confiscate it from that husband. Why? Because there's a call for this. Everybody knows this husband that's getting married to these older daughters sees that there's younger daughters and he knows that the younger daughters are going to need money for the chasana and therefore he should understand that when he's getting this money that it's, it's something that's going to be used. It's, it's needed for the younger daughters. So over here, even if he's a lekeach, it'll be confiscated from him. Mashen can buy a loan, as I explained before. Any loan that's not written in a document, it's very hard to know about this. So that's why over there, if, if you're a buyer and if the husband is a buyer, 
we're not going to confiscate uh, properties from a, from a husband because of a loan that nobody could know about. Okay, so the Shaila still remains a Shaila. The Shaila, again, that was asked to Rove, what happens with her husband when he gets properties from his wife? Is he like a buyer or is he like an inheritor? Isn't this what Ravin sent? And he taught, and he sent in a letter to say that Mishimais, a person that dies, Viniach Almano Bas, and he leaves a, an Almana and a daughter, Almanasai Mizanis Minachasov. So his Almana gets fed from his properties. That's uh, part of the uh, Tanai of Aksuba that she gets fed until she collects her Aksuba, or until she says that she's getting married to someone else. She, she gets fed from his properties. Mrs. Abbas, now the daughter got married. Now the daughter is the one that inherits him and she takes the possessions. The Almana still gets fed from the, 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 this Nechassim of the, that the, her husband left, even though the, the daughter takes it. Mesa Abbas, now even after the daughter passed away, what happens after? Who, who has now the properties of the daughter after she passes away? She got married, she took these properties. And now it's all in the possession of her husband. And now after she passes away, the husband inherits the wife. So Omar Rav Yudah Ben Achais Shal Rav Yosi Berab Chanine. So regarding such a case, he says Al Yadi Haya Maisa. To me came such a kind of story, and I brought it to the Chachamim, and they said Va Amru Al Manasai Nizaynis Menachasov. That even after the daughter took this, she got married, and then she died, and now all the money is by the son-in-law. Nevertheless, the Almana still gets fed from it. So the Gemara explains, So now if you're going to say that the husband, when he gets all these properties from the wife, he's a Yiddish, he inherits this. So he has a halach of a Yiddish. So therefore, even after he inherits it from his wife, nevertheless, the almana still gets the, the mezainis that she's supposed to get from this money. But But if he's a buyer, why would the almana get fed from these nechassim? The halacha of, a, of an almana that gets fed from her husband's possessions or properties is only the possessions and properties that are here still, not whatever was sold off. Whatever was, is sold to someone else, the almana does not get fed from this. So if now her son-in-law has the, 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 the properties and he's like a buyer, so then the, the, the mother-in-law, the almana, should not get anything from this. So that's, so therefore from what... Uh, uh, who is it over here that sent this halacha? Ravin. Ravin that sent this halacha, we see that the, the, the uh, husband has a halacha like a Yiddish, and therefore the almana still gets fed from this. Um, Abayas, Abayas said about this answer that Rav Papa gave, he loved the shalach Ravin. If not, for this halacha that Ravin sent to say, would we not know that this is the halacha? We have a, basically a clear Mishnah that also says the same point. We learned in the Mishnah. These are the cases where we say that it does not return back to its original owner in Yaival. And that is, when a Bechayr gets his double portion, so he doesn't go back to uh, the double portion that he gets, he does not go back to the brothers in the time of Yaival. And the reason is, Rashbami brings, because it's called a Matana. And regarding Matana, Lassus Plishnaim, this Tana, this Mishnah holds that the concept of Yevil, when it goes back to the original owner, is when you sell. So it goes back to the seller. But when it's given as a gift, the halacha of Yevil does not apply. So the, the Bukhari gets his double portion as a gift. So the din of Yevil does not apply. And also the, the Mishnah says, a person that inherits his wife. When a person inherits his wife, this is a Yerushim and a Teireh. As the Rashbam here brings, we had it before in the Pedic here, that we learned from a Pasuk that a person uh, inherits his wife, Minat Taira. And therefore, by inheritance, there's no Allah of Yaival. Okay, so what do we see here? That a husband, when he gets from his wife the properties, he's a Yairish. He's not a Likeyach. If you're going to say that, he's, that from the time that he married her, he's a Likeyach, that he's like a buyer, so then even after she passes away, it, sh- it should go back. It should go back to her, to her family, to her Yarshim. Because... Uh, because of the din of Yevil, that the, every buyer has to give it back to the seller. So here from this clear Mishnah, we see that uh, a husband has a halacha of a Yiddish. Oh, my lady, uh, okay, so but Rav now says, on the other hand, over hashtu the shalach. Now that Rav sent to say this halacha that makes the point that the husband is only like a Yiddish, he's not like a buyer. And, we, and seemingly we see this also here pretty clearly in the Mishnah. But Mia Dina, do we know that this is actually the halacha? And here, Rav brings a different halacha that we see actually the exact opposite. That the halacha of a husband is like a buyer. And, and when he gets the, from his wife, he's a buyer. Because Rav Yesi Rav Chanine said, 
in Usha, which was one of the places that the Sanhedrin exiled to. So there they instituted Ha'isha Shamachra Baila, a wife that sells Niximulog when the husband is still alive. The Niximulog are the properties that she brings into the marriage, and the regarding these properties, the wife owns the body of the properties themselves. And the husband is the one that eats the paytas of the properties. So when the husband is still alive, she went and sold it to someone else. Umay saw, and she dies. So she sells it to this person, telling him that, uh, that when, if I die, so then you, you're, you're going to get it, you're going to acquire it. But Allah is, Habal miyad The husband can come to the buyer and say that I bought it before you. And be, so I'm the first buyer, because when I married my wife, and I get the properties from her, the pay this, so I'm already considered then to be the first buyer of this property. And therefore, she can't sell it to someone else, and if I die, you're going to get it. So over here, you clearly see in this halacha that he's considering the husband to be a buyer. And therefore, you can come to the lekeach and say, I'm a buyer before you. So, so what this, now we have a problem here. What's the halacha? What's the status of a husband? On one hand, we brought a Mishnah before regarding Yevil, and also the halacha regarding a almane being fed from the husband's uh, inheritance. We see that the husband has a halacha of a Yerish. And now over here we see that the husband has a halacha of a buyer. So, El Amar Avashi, therefore Avashi says, when it comes to the status of a husband and when, when taking the properties from his wife, Baal, Shavu Rabbanan Kiyadish, sometimes Rabbanan consider his halacha of taking these properties to be like someone that is inheriting his wife. And also the Shavu Rabbanan Kilakayach, regarding other halachas, they consider him to be a buyer. And basically, the Chachamim do whatever is for the benefit of the husband. Whatever is for his benefit, that's what Chachamim consider him to be. Gabi Yoival, in relation to Yoival, in order that it should not have to return, you shouldn't have to give it back by Yoival, Shavu Rabbanan Kiyadish. They consider him to be uh, to have the halacha of a yodish, and therefore you can keep it. You shouldn't say the day, so you shouldn't lose it when Yehovah comes. Gabi de Rabbi Yosef bar Abchanine. When it comes to the halacha of Rabbi Yosef bar Abchanine, that uh, the wife sold it to someone else when she was still alive. Shavu Rabbanan kalekeach. The Rabbanan say that he's considered to be a lekeach, so that he shouldn't lose out. That he can say that I am the first lekeach, and no one else could buy it from my wife, and he gets it uh, when the wife dies. Now, on the other hand, though, mishum pse, uh, again, mishum pse de dide, that again, this is so, so that you shouldn't lose out if the wife sold to someone else. Oh, but gabe de rovin, when it comes to the halacha that rovin sent to say, and that is for the almana to get fed from the husband's possessions, right? So rovin said, even if the daughter took it and the daughter got married and now the daughter died and there's a son-in-law that's possessing all of this, so rovin said that the almana still gets fed. Mishum say the Dalmana over here actually we're concerned about the Almana because she's the one that has the rights for this even before the daughter got married to anybody else. She, she already had the rights from the Tanai of the Ksuba to get fed from this. So Shavu Rabbanan Kiyadish. Here the Chachamim consider the son in law, the husband of the daughter that took this, that he should be considered to be a Yadish in order not to take away the, the rights of the Almana to get fed. So, okay, so that's, so that's, uh, so, so therefore the point of here is we see that Chachamim consider the husband to be sometimes a Yedish, sometimes a Lekech, depends for, usually it's for the benefit of the husband, and by the case of the Almane, it's for the benefit of the Almane, they consider him to be a Yedish. When, no, the, so. when the Gemara first asked this question, mm-hmm. the Gemara asked, is it a Yedish or, or a Lekech? Why is it a Yedish? Because it's not a Milva Lekech? No, 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 no. The, the nafkemina would be the Gemara was saying the nafkemina is the gabi amilval peh. If he's a yedish, then amilval peh could collect from here. If it's a lekeach, amilval peh can't collect from here. Now the Gemara never resolves that shaila yet. The Gemara never talks about that. The Gemara but, is. But, but let's, let's look. Let's look, from, let's look at it from differently. The, the yedish did not buy anything. I yeah. mean, the the Baal, when he when he, right. he didn't get, he didn't buy anything. He got a wife. He, he got a wife. Him. Yeah. So lecha'ira. He, he, he didn't invest a penny into this. Okay, no. So why are we saying that he should be like the like the Kukas? Shabbat, I mean, like on, the other, on the other hand, he's not a Yiddish either. She didn't die. He's not Yarshining anything. The question is, this that the Chachamim were masakin. It's all at the Kanas Chachamim. That the yeah. husband gets the possessions of the wife. What status did they give this, this rights that he has? Did they give that, those rights similar to a Yiddish or similar to Lekeah? That's the Shaila. We're not saying yeah, but whether he is a Yiddish. That, 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 no, he's not, he's not a Yiddish and he's not a Lekeah. The question he is. Just the way I can't. The wife is still alive. He's not a Yiddish. He understands. He has the same concept as a Yiddish. 
just the way the Yiddish uh, uh, gets after after father passed away, whatever it is. Yeah, they, yeah. they didn't pay a penny for it. Yeah, so I understand. The same okay, thing. But, well, so, uh, but you see here, the Gemara is saying that for the benefit of the husband, there were machazik, this right that he gets from his wife's property that should be so strong, like a For what reason? That's, that's what I'm saying. For his benefit, for the benefit of the husband, that he's, 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 he's oh, taking care of He takes care of her in return. Oh, the halacha is that, <laughs> well, it says that in return he takes care of her, he has to redeem her, he has to feed her, he has to get. So the Chacham made his kayach and the nichsim milog very strong to be like a lekeach. <laughs> Okay, so now the Gemara concludes but, and with a question, but for ho, Gabi de Rabbi Yesi, Bachaninem, the Ekip say the Lulukuchais, Vishavu, Rabban and Kilikeach, but regarding the halacha of Rabbi Yesi, Rabbi Chanine, so here there's a buyer. There's a buyer that bought, that the, the wife sold the properties to Lekeach when she was alive. And what do we say over here? That we give the husband the strength to be considered to be the, the, the lekeach before that buyer of the wife, and he's strong, even though the lekeach of the wife that paid money for this is going to lose harder. And so, why do we say that regarding the lekeach, that the husband is stronger than this lekeach, and when it comes to an almana that's getting fed from the, from the properties, we say that the almana, we're concerned about the loss of the almana, and, and the husband will, is like a, a yadish, and we give the almana. So, so what's, what's the difference? One second, one second. Yeah, you will get back the money, but still, he invested, he wanted to buy it. So why are we not concerned about the loss of the Likeach, and why are we concerned about the loss of the Almana? So the Gemara answer is not the same thing. Over here, you're buying a property from someone's wife that is the Nixim Log of this person, so they're causing themselves their own loss. Even the Ikebal, they know that she's married to someone. So why are they buying it from this woman? The Yasfi Tusi Gavre that's married to somebody. When it comes to an Almana, so this is part of her condition that she's supposed to get fed from the Ksobe. She's not doing anything that uh, she knew that she's bringing herself a loss. So we're concerned about her being able to get her, her uh, Mizaynas that she's supposed to get here. Mashenke, when it comes to this Likeach, why are you going and, and buying something from a, from a wife? So therefore, in such a case, we're not concerned about the loss of the lekeach, and the husband is considered to be the first lekeach, and he gets to keep it. Now, the, the Gemara here never got back to the original Shiloh that it asked. The original Shiloh the Gemara brought this whole, this whole discussion up was regarding a loan. Whether the person that has a loan, could he collect from the husband, the loan of the wife, that is. Could he collect from the husband or not? So the Rashbam's opinion here is, he brings from Rabbeinu Hananel, that in such a case, we compare the one that has a loan to the almana. Because the Gemara here is saying, by the Lekeach, we're not concerned about the Lekeach, because Lekeach brought this loss upon himself. Why are you buying a property from someone's wife? But by, just like by the Almana, the Almana is not doing anything to bring this loss upon herself. So too, a person that borrowed money, he didn't do anything to bring this loss upon himself. He borrowed money from this woman before she even got married, Bechlav, to him. So therefore, Rabbi Nechanan says over here as well, the husband is going to be considered a Yairish, which is a weaker possession he has, and the uh, borrower, or the, the lender that is, will be able to collect the money of this uh, loan. Adron Allah Yesh Neichlin, we shall return to you the eighth Perik of Masech Baba Basra Yesh Neichlin.